<clears throat> hey, hey, superstars, this is my September recap. I got a couple cool little care packages, some really nice pickups, and a whole buttload of video responses. And I got a pretty big butt. Everyone I know has a big butt. So let's jump right in. De AKA Doug wants to see the very first card that really got us into collecting sports ball cards. I started getting into baseball in 1988. I collected these sticker books. This is the Topps one, but the Panini one is the one that I really liked. I didn't find that one right away though when I went to dig this stuff out. Uh, Grandma bought me these stickers every time we went grocery shopping. So not long after that, I started collecting cards. And the one that really sparked my interest was the next year, 1989, when Topps released this super awesome Doug Jones record breaker card. I love this card. Oh man, he must have been really something special to get a standout card like this. So special that that's not even Doug Jones. It's an uncorrected error with the photo of Chris Cotteroli, who I had signed this card for me. Uh, all the other kids were collecting that Upper Deck Griffey and Mark McGuire and Jose Canseco, but none of those guys could hold Doug's jockstrap as far as I was concerned. And I could be talking about Doug Jones, or I could be talking about you, Decon, so take your pick, buddy. Similarly, similar, similar, similarly, 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 similar, similar, similarly to Doug's contest, the autograph fisherman John Burgess wants to know what set we first started collecting. That's super easy. That's uh, 1988 Topps Baseball. Yeah, the design's kind of boring, but I actually think the photography is pretty decent. This set here I put together from packs during the pandemic to sort of go back to my roots or whatever. I'm not really a set builder, but this was kind of fun. Oh, look at that. I'm still missing 232 Bob James. Anyway, uh, John wants us to give three shout outs because he's Canadian. Bless you, Eddie Mutant. Are you friendly? No way, eh? So I'm going to shout out three guys that are super close to that magic number 1000 subs to hopefully help them out a little bit. Uh, the first one is Wade Boggs fan. John obviously likes Wade Boggs, but he also loves vintage and is super meticulous about his collecting. Uh, Mr. Fisherbike. Uh, Jason is an OG and should have hit a thousand a long time ago. Really good community guy. And um, let's see, Dustin and Blake, my favorite Minnesotans. Dustin is another really good, really active community guy. So go get those guys up over a thousand if you're so inclined. I actually missed the deadline on this one, but whatever. Uh, Ground Chuck hit and has since surpassed 406 subs. So in honor of Ted Williams hitting 406, he wanted to hear about records that'll never be broken. So here's my man Cy Young. A lot of people know he's got more wins than any pitcher in history with 511, but he's also got the most losses with 315. You gotta be a real workhorse to have that many losses. I was curious to see who else was close. Phil Necro is number five on the list with 274. Walter Johnson is fourth with 279. Nolan Ryan is third all time with 292. Coming in at second is Pud Galvin with 308 losses. He played in the 1800s, so I don't have a card of his. And of course, Denton True Young leads the pack there. So it's kind of a dubious stat, but he's in really good company. Scott at Autographs 2000 is celebrating 1,000 subs, so congrats, Scott. He simply wants to see us rip a pack of cards in a creative way or place, and I don't really open packs on my channel, so I thought if I just opened a pack at all, that would be different, but I don't think that would work, so we're going to get creative. Um, we've got a pack of my all-time favorite cards, 1990 Fleer, obviously, and we're going to use my laser to open these. We'll just put this in here, press that big glowy button, and... Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. You didn't think I was actually going to go through with it, did you? I would never open a pack of 90 Fleer on purpose. Blech. Moving on. Oh, hey. Excuse me. So Pepino Man wants us to cheer him up and share some good baseball card videos. And frankly, this was a tough one. Get it, Frank? Um, so how about 
Frank's Cards and Collectibles. Now, Frank opens a lot of hockey, which I don't know, not really my thing, but he does open other stuff. And I really like that he opens with his dad occasionally. Um, and then there's Frank M's, TTM's, autographs, and much more. Um, this Frank is a Boston guy, and he's doing a lot of different series. I got to check my notes here. Uh, we got Waxy Wednesday, Wicked Thursday, The TTM Show, and Shoebox Lore. And he does some really fun editing. And I really don't know how he keeps up with all that content. And um, Frank's Card Corner. He's super silly. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't post a ton. But uh, when he does, it's must-watch stuff. So uh, there you go, Pepino, man. Three Franks for you. SFI Sports Cards is brand new to me, but I like what I see so far. He's celebrating 100 subs, and he wants to see a Hall of Famer and a non-Hall of Famer from our favorite era. I like the uh, 1910s and 20s a lot. I could show off these uh, 1914 B18 blankets. Jack Graney is technically a Hall of Famer as a broadcaster, and Ray Chapman here is an interesting story, but kind of a bummer. I also like the late 1940s and early 50s a lot. There was a lot going on. Uh, baseball ramped back up after the war. You've got integration happening. My Cleveland Indians had some great players. And you've got card companies starting to make some really, really neat cards like 1949 Leaf. Here is one of the coolest looking cards ever made, uh, Jim Hegan. He was a fantastic defensive catcher who handled the likes of Hall of Famers Bob Feller, Early Wynn, and Bob Lemon. And since Sammy of SFI is a Yankees fan, here is Hall of Famer Joe Gordon. The Yankees traded him for the Chief, Ali Reynolds, and he was a super integral part of Cleveland's 1948 World Series wins. So congrats, Sammy, and I'm looking forward to getting to know you and your channel a little better. Another brand new to me channel is Huck Sports Cards. They're celebrating 200 subs and want to know who are our five favorite players that we've actually seen play. This one was kind of tough. I uh, automatically started pulling out all the mid 90s Indians, you know, because I'm a homer. And uh, right away I had too many players and I was kind of torn between Manny and Albert. Manny was such a natural hitter and Albert was just so intense, but uh, I didn't necessarily want to go with all bat, so I dumped them in favor of Jose Ramirez. I was going to avoid any current players, but Jose is a super underdog, team first kind of guy, very intense, and a pretty good fielder. Uh, Jimmy gets a nod here, another good guy, team first, really strong and all that stuff. Uh, Kenny Lofton was a joy to watch. Gold glove fielder, great leadoff guy, speed, contact, just a fantastic player. Except for Jim Tomey, defense was a big factor for me. So Omar makes the list. Underrated hitter, just uh, underrated in general. Also very fun to watch. And Roberto Alomar, just kind of the perfect 90s baseball player. Gold glove guy, could give you whatever was necessary at the plate, be it power or a sack bunt, just whatever you needed. Roberto could do it all. So uh, congrats, Huck. Looking forward to getting to know you better as well, sir. Cash and Dad hit 500 subs. I don't know if this one's still going on, but all they wanted you to do was give them a little shout out. So woo, Cash and Dad, congratulations. 500 subs is awesome. Go check them out. Great father-son videos, not just the cards, but rock and roll and silliness and general mischief. All around good stuff, guys. Last one, I promise. So uh, John Keating at That 70s Card Show simply wants to see some of your favorite 70s cards. I just picked up this Phil Necro poster, so that's fresh on my mind. I love the 1970 All-Star cards. Even the backs are cool. 75 Frank Robinson is one of my all-time favorite cards. Almost as cool as Oscar Gamble here. This one's for you, John. And the Eckersley rookie. I love the shadow going across his face and the garbage bag sleeves and the caveman uniforms. So much good stuff there. So many video responses, and now I think I need a nap, but the show must go on. If you saw my last video, I went to a Pirates game with Don, and while we were there, Don gave me a couple of cards. I'd been looking for this 77 Tops Indians team card, and I did not have a Dave Roberts autograph, so thanks, Don. You're a good dude, no matter what everybody else is saying about you. Not my usual camera setup because I was working on a big painting and it was in the way, but uh, Dustin sent a Just Because You're Awesome Mail Day, really cool Joey Bell Minor League card, and a gold Kipnis. All kinds of awesome, Dustin. Thanks, man. 
This one is from Tim McCourt, no note, but Tim sent a very cool Carlos Santana relic card. And then the very next day, he sent another one. This one's a turkey red Jim Tomey. Neat, I did not have either of these, Tim. Thank you, sir. We've almost made it to the end of all this nonsense. Now I gotta show off all the stuff I bought myself in September. This was a neat promotional piece from a department store in the 90s commemorating the 1948 World Series signed by Braves legends Warren Spahn and Johnny Sane and the Cleveland Bobs Feller and Lemon. I picked up this signed Al Rosenball, not that I needed another Al Rosenball, but the inscriptions were cool. 1953 AL MVP, 1954 111 wins and AL champs and 1948 World Series champs. I didn't buy this, but I mentioned it to the guys at COG Sports Cards and they wanted to see it. So here is an early 80s top sports card locker. There you go. Uh, Decon is gonna like this one. I got to meet the Guardians all-star second baseman, Andres Jimenez at a signing. This isn't my art, but still a really cool print. And Andres was super cool and that was a lot of fun. Let's see, Math Bowler came out to visit recently. I'm doing, I'm doing all kinds of name dropping here. Anyway, we hung out at my LCS where I picked up another really sharp Don Mossy rookie card. One cannot have enough Don Mossy rookie cards. I bought another Diamond Stars card for my team set. Really fun looking Hal Trotsky. He was a good power hitting first baseman, big number, short career kind of guy. I love that one. And every September I try to buy myself something extra cool for my birthday. And this year I picked up this high number 67 Rocky Calavito. This one can get kind of pricey. I was bidding on raw ones and they were going for ridiculous numbers. And this really sharp SGC4 popped up and I won the auction for way less than what I thought it would go for. So I was really happy to score that one. That is it for now. Thanks for sticking around for all those video responses. Crazy stuff, but uh, go check out all of those guys. Decon, the Autograph Fisherman, John Burgess, Ground Chuck, Autographs 2000, Pepino Man, SFI Sports Cards, Huck Sports Cards, Cash and Dad's Pack Busters, and that 70s card show. Thanks again to Don, to Dustin and Blake, and Tim McCourt, and thanks to Math Bowler for coming out to hang out with me. And thank you guys for watching. I got a really neat art video coming next week, so we will see you real soon.